with Sophie. Sophie is an 11 week old poodle and she is here for our basic obedience. Uh, one of the main questions that I seem to be getting about puppies is how young is too young to start training? Uh, or how old do they need to be rather before we start training? Now, uh, as you guys can see from, uh, from Baya, who was eight weeks old when she got here, we started training immediately, okay? Uh, now, the, th the same thing goes for Sophie. She got here, she's a little bit late as far as uh, being that young. She's 11, 12 weeks old. But I'm gonna show you how we start training the puppies. Now, uh, notice I have a table out here. She's shivering, she just got a bath, so she's a little bit cold, it's a little chilly out here in the building. Um, so we got her up on a raised surface, okay? Now that is strictly for my benefit. That way I don't have to lean down. I'm able to get her into positions uh, and uh, just keep her totally calm. Also, putting her up on a higher surface is gonna start to build her confidence. I've got my treat bag, which just happens to be full of Red Barn beef roll, uh, which Sophie loves. Um, and so all I'm gonna do is put her on the table and you're gonna notice me luring her around with the food, okay? I want her to understand that the food coming from my hand is just the greatest thing in the world, right? During this stage, guys, and this is very, very crucial. During this stage, there are no corrections, okay? Everything is super positive. You can't get frustrated with your dog, all right? The great thing about a puppy is it's a blank canvas, but it's a blank canvas of mush, okay? So it's up to you to mold that mush, mold that clay into something that you want, okay? So I'm gonna put her down. All right, so now all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have my roll of food in my hand, and I'm just gonna lure. Puppy, puppy, puppy. So notice that I'm just luring her around. She's smelling that food. I'm just gonna give it to her, let her understand that everything is okay. Puppy, puppy, puppy. Yes. Now notice I'm gonna say the word yes. And now what's gonna happen? Sophie, yes. Good, she turns right around. When she hears that word yes, she knows that there's a package being delivered. Sophie, yes. Good girl, yes. All right, so what I'm gonna start doing here is just molding her into positions, okay? That would obviously be a sit. Now, I'm not gonna call it anything right now um, because there's nothing that she can do wrong at this point. I'm gonna put her into a D-O-W-N, all right? And then I'm gonna let her just understand that is so good, she's being so good. Get that head up, get that hip down, that butt down, yes. I'm gonna give her that Marker word, that's good behavior that I'm looking for here. Puppy, puppy, puppy. Puppy, puppy, puppy. Yes. Good job, yes. Puppy, puppy. And notice, notice what I'm doing here, guys. All I'm doing is manipulating her around with food. I'm using my other hand, come on, puppy, puppy, puppy. Yes, good, yes, very good. Sit. Yes, yes, good job, good job. Good, everything is super, super positive, okay? All right, so just kind of give you the run through, guys. If I want to get her to understand the SIT position, I'm gonna lure her around. Good girl, good girl. All right, so she's gonna sit, and I'm gonna say yes, and I'm gonna give her that food. Notice she's sitting. She really doesn't know what a sit is, but she knows when that rear end hits the ground, she gets that food, right? Okay, so the same thing with the, the down. I'm gonna put this thing in between her legs or between her front feet. I might have to guide her, I'll let her figure it out. As soon as those elbows hit the ground, yes, I'm gonna give her that food. Okay, now notice I'm not calling it anything. I'm not calling it a position at all. I'm just luring her and getting her in a position. If I want her to get where she stands up, yes. Okay, down the road, that'll be a stand position or a pose position. All right, again, I want everything to be super, super, super good with her, okay? Yes, good job, good job. See, later down the road, next week, we're gonna start calling these things, okay? So I would actually put this food down here. I would say down, those elbows would hit the ground, I'd say yes and I would mark that as good behavior, behavior that we wanted, and then I would just continue to move. Now, these sessions right here, guys, they don't need to be long at all because we're gonna lose that puppy's attention, right? Okay, we wanna make sure that she's having a great time. 
All you're doing is luring her around positions. And guys, remember this. Training a puppy can be as, uh, as amazing or as, as fun or as frustrating as you make it. Go into it understanding that your puppy doesn't know a thing, and it's up to you to teach the puppy what you want him or her to learn. Isn't that right? That's right. Good girl. All right, so think about that. Put in your work. Three to four, five little mini sessions a day, four to five minutes at a time, tops, okay? And then take your dog out, take your puppy out and play, all right? All right, guys, that's it for the puppy training. In just a second, we'll be back with the kennel question. Hey guys, one of the main questions that we're getting as far as kennel training is how to get the dog to enjoy going in the kennel. All right, so this is what we're going to talk about. Keep in mind, guys, this is a mini prison to a dog. All right, it's got four walls, it's got a roof, it's got a floor, it's got a gate that slams shut. So it's understandable that they don't necessarily like to go in there at first, okay? But get this, dogs are denning animals, okay? They're denning, so they like to go in there, they like to den down, uh, they want to get in there where it's dark and sleep. Um, we want to introduce the kennel in a very positive manner, not opening up the door, slamming, uh, throwing them in there, or forcing them in there, and then shutting the door and leaving for a period of time. We want them to understand that this is a really, really neat place. Now, this kennel here comes with a gate that comes off. This is a, a, a Roughland kennel. Uh, I love the Rough Tough Roughland kennel lines. Um, they do not give me any kind of royalties for sales, but this is a really good kennel here. The door does come off, so we're able to do this little drill. So what I'm gonna do is put Sophie here. I'm gonna let her, well, she's just going in there because she's already done this drill before. Um, so, Sophie, puppy, 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 puppy. Yes, all I'm gonna do is take her food and I'm gonna throw that in there, okay? So she's gonna go in there, she's gonna get that food, she's gonna have a look around. Notice I don't have the door on. I'm not shutting the door on her. Puppy, puppy. Yes. Okay, I'm not shutting the door on her just yet. I'm letting her go in there, look around. It's fun for her. She gets a reward when she goes inside. And then after about three or four times of this where she's comfortably going in, kennel, I'm gonna start calling it something, okay? I'm gonna start calling it kennel. Now the dog understands when they, uh, when I say kennel, they go in there, they get something good, kennel. And now after this takes place, I'm going to go ahead and start putting the door on, okay? Now, when she goes in this time, Sophie, puppy, puppy, puppy. Kennel. I'm just going to shut the door, okay? I'm not going to latch it. I'm just going to shut it for just a brief second. Let it sit there for just a second, and then I'm going to open it back up and say, yes, good girl. Um, we, again, we want this to be as, as positive as possible. Good girl. Puppy, puppy, puppy. Yes. So she's going to go in there. I'm just going to shut the door. And guys, this is going to take a little bit of time, okay? I've already been working with Sophie on this because she did have some kennel anxiety when she came. Hey, good girl, yes. Okay, so notice um, that she's freely going in. She doesn't mind going in there. She knows that there's some good stuff, yes. And now what I'll do is I'll actually shut it and I'll walk a step back for just a minute, okay? So I'm not gonna go anywhere. I want her to still hear my voice. I want her to still understand that I'm around, but I just want her to get comfortable in there with the door shut. Yep, hey, good job. Now guys, remember, everything in your puppy's world needs to be super positive, all right? If at, if at any moment this starts to turn negative and you start getting super frustrated, stop what you're doing and walk away, okay? Because we want your dog, your puppy, um, whether it's 11 weeks old like Sophie here, or you have an eight-year-old, we want this to be a super, super positive experience for the dog, because if it's not, that's when you start having issues. Yes, good job, good job. All right, guys, so your homework would be to have some uh, high-value food or high-value treats. If your dog is not food-driven, you can throw a ball in there. Now, 
Please listen to this carefully. Do not, I'm going to say it one more time, do not put toys in the kennel and leave them in there, okay? Uh, there is a little thing that I do with a Kong where I pack it full of food or, or something like that where it gives the dog uh, something to do while it's in there, but you have to really watch that. And when they're done with that Kong, you need to pull it out. No toys, no blankets, um, you know, no pillows, nothing of that nature needs to go in this kennel because if your puppy or your dog gets bored, the first thing they're going to do is start chewing at that toy or that blanket or that pillow and then they may ingest it and then we've got issues uh, going down the road, don't we? Yes, yes we do. All right, so your homework guys, work with your dog on throwing food, throwing something of high value in there. Don't close the door just yet. Let them see that this is a game and everything about this kennel is fun, all right? Hey guys, one thing I wanted to speak to you about before we get off is breed selection, okay? There's a lot of things that go into consideration when you're looking at either um, getting a puppy or getting an older dog. Uh, you need to look at your lifestyle. You need to look at how active you are. Are you sedentary? Do you like to come home and lay on the sofa and watch TV after your uh, day at work? Are you someone that likes to go on hikes? Do you like to go to the beach? Do you love to go ride your bike? Uh, do you like to get outside and move around? Uh, how many hours in the day do you work? Do you work a, a 40 hour work week? Do you work a 60 hour work week? Do you uh, just have a part time job? Do you have time to tend to your dog? Um, so selecting the breed off of your lifestyle is going to be so huge in the end with you being happy with your dog. I'll give you an example. Um, several years ago, the movie 101 Dalmatians came out. Now, after that movie came out in the theaters, everyone wanted a Dalmatian, okay? They were great on screen, they were cute, they were cuddly looking, they were very well trained in the movie, uh, so people went out and got a Dalmatian. Well, one thing that they failed to understand is that without proper training, Dalmatians are pretty hard to live with. So what happens a couple years down the road? You see an influx of Dalmatians in the animal shelters and humane societies because people just could not handle these dogs. All right, a few years after that, a movie named Max comes out. Okay, Max is a, a military canine. He searches out uh, weapons and explosives and things of that nature. And he is a Belgian Malinois. Well, people start getting on YouTube and they see these Belgian Malinois doing amazing things. They're climbing the walls, they're climbing trees, they're jumping in the cars, they're jumping 20 feet in the air, uh, super fast, just amazing, amazingly athletic dogs. So now what we've seen in the training community and in the canine community is that there is that same upswing in people that want Belgian Malinois, all right? so. I have had the opportunity now to work with six Belgian Malinois, not counting the puppy that I have, okay? Um, and every one of those families understood going into this what they were in for. That's why they sought my help early, all right? Uh, Belgian Malinois are great guy, great dog guys. I mean, they're phenomenal. I purchased one myself. I'm sure you've seen Baya. She's now 10 weeks old. Uh, the reason I got that dog or I got her is because, well, I know a guy, all right? I know a dog trainer, and I have a lot of time to spend with this dog. So uh, I took that in consideration before because I'm a Rottweiler guy. I've got six Rottweilers, all right? I have been a Rottweiler guy for the last 20 years. My very first dog that I could buy on my own was a Rottweiler. I knew that they would not mature fully until they were about two years old. I know they were... Uh, they're pretty laid back, okay? Uh, they're just big dogs, all right? And they and I understood that going into it, and I was able to work with my dogs to get them where I wanted to go. Um, so all that to say this, if you are in the market for a dog, okay, whether it be a rescue that you want to get that's a little bit older or you want to get a puppy, look at your lifestyle first and then match it up with the breed. Don't just go and say, oh, I want a Belgian Malinois. Oh, I want a German Shepherd. I want a Doberman. I want a Rottweiler. Uh, I want a Chihuahua. I want a, um, uh, a Sharpay. It, it doesn't matter the breed, but don't just go and say, I want that. 
look at your lifestyle and see what your lifestyle will allow, okay? It's kind of like, um, I would like to be driving a Ferrari on the weekends, but you know what? <laughs> my lifestyle and my bank account, don't, they don't fit a Ferrari. So look at that, take all that in consideration before you're buying your next dog, okay? If there's anything I can do to help you guys out in the future with your, uh, your canine, your puppy, your older dog, feel free to reach out, let me know, uh, and continue to ask your questions, guys. I have loved receiving the questions that I did, and uh, we're gonna do this again every Tuesday night at seven o'clock. Um, and it's just, it's been super fun to me to be able to answer these questions for you. So guys, have a great rest of the week, and we will see you next time.